Hey, welcome to Project Beats. My name is Joven and this is another build video. If you're new around here, I do some DIY e-drum builds, covers, uh, drum tutorials, and gear reviews. Definitely consider subscribing if you're into that kind of stuff. Today is another long overdue project that took a bit of a backseat. Mainly because of time and other things. But big thanks to all of you guys who used my affiliate links and those who support this channel. I was able to get to this long overdue project which is the DIY snare trigger upgrade which is more of a high-end type of build. Before I share my thoughts and results, was it worth it to spend this amount of time and money into this type of build? I won't tell you yet that the answer is a big yes. Oh wait, um, I mean here is the build process. Okay, let me just break down this uh, build. These metal parts, it's a T-slot extrusion or aluminum profile. Uh, I mounted it with using a L bracket. The best option would be to go with a uh, slotted L bracket, just like this. I, I went with this uh, smaller ones anyway, so I just find it like a bit too, I don't know, a bit too long. The way you would screw in Anything on a uh, aluminum profile T-slot nut. Uh, it's what they call it. This one I'm going to show you is a is a M5 M5 nut. It just goes in like that, and uh, you can screw in right directly from here. This one is an M5, so you would need uh, an M5 screw like uh, this would be, and then you can start attaching things. Let me take this out first. I did not have a lot of. Uh, these, these M5 uh, T-slot nuts. So what I did was to print out some adapters to hold uh, an M4 nut. You can use it like this, or you can you can uh, use it like like this. So you, you you're inverting it. So for this part right here, I, I I used the adapter this way. So that's how I I attached this. For the base plate, I initially wanted to do a six side. The, my, my first idea was to connect all six sides to this base, but 
I wasn't able to find a 110 or 120 millimeter length um, aluminum profile uh, so I went with a 150 I didn't want to to sew or to cut this so I just went with the three sides it it's working perfectly for me so I'm not worried about that too much so I reprinted a three three hole um, base for the for the decoupler and the trigger foam so the, the trigger is in here, in between the decoupler and, and the trigger foam. Our drums has this, uh, some kind of like tip. Uh, I don't know what that's for, for the tip of the, of the trigger foam. But this whole setup is, it's very solid. I also printed this, um, M4 nut holder. I made it this long, so it kind of has a, a longer, more secure hold of the aluminum profile. And I made it a bit thicker. This is exactly four millimeters thick that this would act as a riser for the whole setup. But since I attached the L bracket in reverse, so that would lower the whole setup by four millimeters, uh, enabling me to, to get the desired uh, length. Ideally, you would want this to be 1 to 1.5 uh, millimeters above the bearing edge. That's what I, I got exactly. So I measured everything for my specific setup. The snare I'm using is a stock snare or the kit snare that comes with a Tama Club Jam. By the way, this uh, decoupler and trigger setup uh, I bought from R Drums. They are up to spec with Roland Standard. So. It's essentially plug and play with any Roland uh, module. I didn't want to worry about uh, that two platform, you, you know, that usual setup. So I went with this. It's simple enough for me. So I already have this uh, 3.5 setup from the trigger before. The, the one that I was using was this uh, Joe Becky side mounted trigger. Which is great for toms, but not so much for the snare, at least from my experience. This was using a 3.5 millimeter uh, jack, so I went with that setup for, for this configuration as well. Uh, what I have here is a 3D printed um, headphone jack 3.5 holder. So it just basically screws in. Let me see if I can give you a good angle. So, By the way, this is what you see from, from the bottom. You have the... Um, rim piezo at the bottom also another 3d printed part here which uh, let me see if i have a sample i can show you this one's a bit rubbery so i didn't use it this flexes so i wanted a more solid um print that would translate the information from my rim or rim click directly to the piezo so there you go it just locks in using this um, M4 nut adapter that goes in there and then screws in with the M4 screw. Um, so yeah, there, so you got this female jack holder that I printed. And then I also printed a cable clips that just goes directly here in, in the aluminum profile, like that. Just press in, uh, bit tough, yeah, there. It just attaches like that. So makes all the uh, cable management a bit tidy. Uh, I think the aluminum profile extrusion, I'm not sure if it's like the best way to transfer all the information to the piezo. It's the best material to use. Um, but it's definitely one of the easiest to work with. No drilling required. And as far as my experience go, it works really well. So I like to set it up like this. Facing me. Okay, let me just plug that in. When I play rim click like this. The butt end of the stick goes to the over the rim in this area, and then I, I play on this kind of uh, area that gives me the best response in terms of rim click. You know, you would have to play rim click differently with e drums, you have to play on the rim both, both ends. So, this for me is the best setup. So yeah, that's the breakdown of the setup. I just uh, have a cable tire. This is from the last, the previous build. If ever I accidentally tug on this from the outside, nothing is gonna be damaged. So everything is really secure. Yeah, I think this is a nice build overall. 
that's the setup. Let me just put this back and play some examples for you. I think it's a huge success considering the level of difficulty. It's pretty easy for this type of design and build. Plus, I saved a bit of money building it myself instead of ordering the full trigger system. I'm not saying my design is better in terms of performance. I'm just happy that I saved a bit of money. Besides some soldering which you could skip and opt for a solderless connectors, I wanted to make it as easy and less intimidating as possible in case some of you guys want to replicate this type of build. I will leave all the parts list in the description. You could of course build from this design and I'm sure some of you more creative people will be able to make a better design. My setup is PD128 pad as recommended by Ardrum, so in the, in the Roland TD17 module. And I ended up with these settings which I may still tweak a little bit, but it's pretty close to perfect for me. I think I may mess around with the trigger build a little bit more, but I'm very happy with the results so far. So in terms of workflow, I would only turn on the cross stick function on the module when I know I will use it. If not, I will turn it off to avoid accidental rim click sounds. For the rim shot, I find it's more effective when I play around this this area so rim with a head on the side or on, on this part right here generally avoiding the center for the most part not that I'm avoiding hot spotting which by the way is close to none even when hitting the cone directly which says a lot about the quality of the Ardrum's trigger which is amazing my point is, if you get more head piezo than rim piezo, that would kind of cancel the rim shot. If I understand it correctly, you need more rim piezo signal and just a bit of, a, of the head piezo for the rim shot to play. So if you're gonna hit the foam cone head on with the, with the rim, that would kind of cancel the rim shot sound. Of course, you can tweak it in the module, but I kind of like where my overall settings is right now. For a future experiment, I'm thinking of tapping the rim piezo um, and adding a kind of groove wedge on the side. Maybe around right here. A bit of a ATV or F note kind of build, but we'll see. If you're on a budget, I have used both Go Edrum and Joe Becky side mounted internal trigger for Tom's. Um, and between the two, as far as my experience go, I would recommend the Go E-Drum. They are cheaper, less damaging on the internal shell, perform similarly. And in my case, it lasted longer. But if you source the parts and build the whole assembly yourself, you can of course save more money. But that depends on how much time you want to spend researching and understanding the whole build process. There are some other solid options around. I will try to link all of them in the description below. The R drums, however, I cannot recommend 100%. They are definitely one of, if not the best, top tier e drum parts provider out there. Um, they also build excellent trigger systems that's plug and play. And you can trust that they have put in the work into making sure their products are as reliable and as robust as it is. But 
the shipping fee is very expensive, depending of course where you are located. So take that into consideration. By the way, I am not sponsored by our drums. I wish I was, but I'm not. I paid for everything myself. So yeah, in my case, I went for it because I did not want to spend the time researching for the right parts to use and experimenting with the correct levels of decoupling and ending up with a lot of parts that will just be collecting dust eventually. I wanted to play drums and not spend all my time doing that, so here we are. Having said that, for me personally, I would say 100% it's worth it for me. But it's up to you to decide if it's the same for you. Okay, overall impression, I am pretty happy with this build. Head, rim shot, rim click, and ghost notes are on point. It's performing great, which is what I expected. It's definitely not perfect, and there's a lot of factors that contribute to that. But so far, this is a huge jump from my previous uh, setup, which was the Joe Becky side-mounted internal trigger. I will try and get back to you with a long-term review in the future, so let's see how well it holds up. To be clear, this is not going to replace high-end e-drums like Drumtech, ATV, or Roland VAD and the likes. Those builds are on another level and they have a team of engineers. In comparison, this is just a DIY project by a drummer who's pretty much just guessing. Okay. I have one more build coming up which is the kick trigger upgrade. It's already done. That solves a lot of issues versus using side mounted trigger for the kick which I will talk about more in the next video. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to support this channel, I just recently made a buy me coffee page, link below. With your support, I can continue making these types of videos. Thank you for watching and let me know your thoughts in the comments below and see you in the next project.